and as I stand above my pale enemy, praying to all that is holy to wake me from this nightmare, waiting for this moment. The journey through the dark, which my colleagues and I have fought through, promises that we will see light, a light that will vanquish all evil. But a promise is never an answer. So, in our final moments before possible death, I have to ask, how did we end up here? One man, the man they call Dracula. Many midnights before. Three cheers for the happy couple! Hebrek! Hooray! Hebrek! Hooray! Hebrek! Hooray! <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Siebert. You may be a very learned friend of mine, but you do know how to start a party. Oh, <laughs> not guilty, young Jonathan! <laughs> I do think the doctor possessed too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boys, do stop teasing each other. We don't want a bloodbath before the wedding now, do we? <laughs> boys will be boys, me and <laughs> Especially these educated types. <laughs> ladies, ladies, leave the boy alone. He's worked very hard to become a top solicitor, and there's no harm in this little showing off once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, kind sir. Money may not be everything, but for now, it allows me choices. Mm. The choice to give Mina the wedding she dreams of. <laughs> oh, you'll regret those words soon enough, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he'll be begging for scraps by the time I'm finished with him. <laughs> Wonderful. Then I look forward to a happy marriage with no money. No home, but a fine lady. Call my own. Oh, you'll regret saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I suspect that you are a mercenary when it comes to marriage, Miss Lucy. Oh, that, my dear Dr. Seward, is for me to know, and you soon never find out. <laughs> I certainly wouldn't be opposed to such a challenge. Fill us in the chase and never the capture. Wouldn't you agree, Miss Webster? Half a homeless. Well, Mr. Holmwood, I suppose the thrill can be achieved by the right gentleman. That's the right price. <laughs> <laughs> you must excuse my uneducated friend. He may be of value, but not even he knows the true value of a lady's work. <laughs> With American, I'm such a lucky lady to receive this attention. Quincy, Quincy Morris. I come from the state of Texas, where we have cattle as big as towers, and rattlers that'll poison a man from 40 feet away. Oh, please. Very interesting, Mr. Morris. I shall look forward to the tour and some other tall tales. You are such a tease. <laughs> and so, a toast. A toast to my beautiful bride to be. The object of my affection, my Mina. It's been a long road, studying, traveling, and working to achieve where I am today. After all, it is not every day you achieve such a prestigious status at the Stoker Law Firm, but here we are. And so, to my friends, my colleagues and my new. Thank you for your support. Cheers. 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 Congratulations, John Jonathan. Thank you again, kind sir. Although I never thought that you would be a tamed man, well, how long was I? Well, Mina is a very special woman. She's bright, sophisticated, humorous. Yes, yes, all right. She's not listening now, is she? <laughs> yes, but still. I see you've not given up on the old marriage ideals. Sorry, what? The lovable Lucy. I said nothing of her, sir. You said nothing, but your eyes have not left their side all night. You, sir, are a rascal, and a very honest one as well. Yes. See, Lucy is a very voracious girl. A girl like Lucy craves wealth and stability and a handsome benefactor. Mm. Well, 12 free isn't bad, is it? Yes. Mark my words, my boy. That girl will be on my arm by the time you have returned from your travels. I will hold you there, good friend. <laughs> ah, hello, Mr. Renfield. Uh, Jonathan, this is Mr. Renfield. He is from one of my rehabilitation units. <coughs> I hope you're around and bring him along. He's been doing rather well recently, and I do believe that social interaction is the best form of medicine for my patients. Oh, so, it's very nice to meet you. Likewise, Mr. Arca. Uh, thank you for the invite, Doctor. <laughs> You're very welcome, Mr. Redfield. Now tell me, how are you feeling today? I am fine. 
that is good. And what do you make of all this disgraceful weather we are having, Mr. Renfield? I am fine. That Work in progress. Ah, oh, Jonathan. Mia, I was just speaking to Mr. Renfield over here. Oh, how pleasant. I am so glad that you could attend. Are you from around these parts? No. I used to sleep soundly in a dark room. Sleeping soundly to the piercing screams of the patients next door! <laughs> Not anymore. That's nice. Jonathan, we should really think about wrapping up this party soon. You do have a long journey ahead of you. Goodness, I did not realise the time. I need to pack as well. Where did you say you were travelling to again? Some European town, just to the east of the Carpathian Mountains. I've been reading up on it. Fascinating place. The land beyond the forest. Okay. Sounds exciting. A place called Transylvania. Indeed it does. I just wish they'd send someone else to run their errands for them. They are paid much higher than you. Yes, but I am the new boy, and I need to wear my stripes and all that. Besides, I can bring you back something nice. Well, only if you want to, but I will only settle for whatever it is that is beyond the forest. <laughs> I will bear that in mind, wife to be. <laughs> no! Oh my god, what is that? Get rid of it! Lucy, what is going on? Me Calm down, it's just a harmless bat. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> oh, I can't bear to look at it. Just get rid of it, someone. Let me lower it, Zeno. Oh, for devil's sake. Oh, me, oh, honestly, just breathe for me, okay? Come on. Everybody just relax. It's probably more frightening of you. It's my master. My master's finally come for me. Would someone please remove this lunatic? Let's see, come back with me, please. We must get you back to the hospital. With me. There, scare him away. Honestly, what harm could the bat bring to us all? Cool, darling, you're right. Of this man. From dusk 
till dawn be where night comes. Night lets rise and shadows fall. Wolves howl and wail in these wounded skies. And the wind things hearken to their cries. The restless dead and souls forsaken. From their death and sleep awaken. And those that shun the light of day. Attention earlier. 
Forgive me for snooping, sir. No offense was intended. Mr. Harker, please. <laughs> I lead a very lonely life, so I yearn for any opportunity for hospitality. Please help yourself. Thank you. Those books have been good friends to me, and for some years past, ever since I had the dream of going to your city of London, those books have given me many hours of pleasure. You speak as though you haven't been to London. Ah, in my dreams I have. I yearn to walk through the crowded streets of your city of London, to be in the rush and whirl of humanity. But, alas, I only know your tongue through books. But you speak English thoroughly. Not so. I know that. Did I move and speak in your city of London? Anyone there who would know me would only know me for a stranger. That is not enough for me. Here, the common people know me, and I am master, but a stranger in a strange land. He is no one. You speak as though you are otherworldly. As I said, Mr. Harker, a stranger in a strange land. Blasted wolves again. They have stalked me all over this journey. Listen to my children of the night, what music they make. I suppose, sir. Ah, sir. You dwellers in the city cannot possibly enter into the fields of the hunt. If you believe that, sir, I will not object whilst I am a guest in your home. The bells of midnight have struck. Goodness, I did not realize that it was so late. I need to write Mina before I fall asleep tonight. Mina? Yes, she is my lady. Well, we are engaged to be wed. Oh, congratulations, I'm sure, Mr. Harkin. We are men who are consumed by the opposite sex. We are seduced by their flattery and their flesh. We know how they play. Meaning what, exactly? I meant no offense, Mr. Harkin. I'm sure this Mina is a specimen of the highest order. Do not think me inappropriate if I ask for a view. No, not so. We met each other at Whitby whilst you were studying for her lord. She is one of God's women, but the heavens do not deserve her. When I go to London, she will become one of mine. And so, I propose to her, and we'll be wed upon my return to England. Yes, yes, I'm sure, Mr. Harker, but uh, it's getting late and your bed is ready. And tomorrow, you shall sleep as late as you will. Thank you, that's very kind of you, sir. And one more thing before I retire. While you're a guest in this castle, you may go anywhere you wish, except for where the doors are locked. Is there not a key or- EXCEPT FOR WHERE THE DOORS ARE LOCKED! There is reason that all things are as they are, Mr. Harker, and if you had seen with my eyes, and you had known with my knowledge, perhaps you'd understand better. Understood, Count Dracula. Now, I have to be away till afternoon, so sleep and dream well, Mr. Harker. For the rest of my evening, my thoughts could not escape the demeanour of the Count. The light and warmth of his courteous welcome was overtaken by a sudden air of fear. His face was long, pale, and tired. He would speak of battles as though he had fought them. He spoke as though he had lived many lives. He was peculiar.
What manner of women are you? We are desire. Your desire. You dream of us, and we are here to feed your lust. You may fight, and you may resist, and you may scream. Impossible, I insist you leave. Stop! Your resistance drives us to madness. Oh, what we would give to pleasure. To pleasure and to love you. All oh, in the name of our beloved. Leave him! <gasps> what would you want him? We desire him. He is ours. Stop! Changed in any way since I came into it. Counting his pride's in, image now firmly imprinted in my memory. Now sets as a reminder. A reminder that I am his. I am now a prisoner. Oh, Lucy, you cannot be seriously considering Dr. Seward. 
this proposal. Oh, it would be most cruel. Mina, I've made my decision and I stand by it. Although, he did present me with the most beautiful ring. I'll call for my jewelry box. Many men in my position would accept such behaviour, but I am extremely lucky to have her. Lucy, are you unwell? Is that why he's here? No, no, of course not. Um, we were having a conversation about... Um, oh, about Jonathan's disappearance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mina has been very concerned as of late, and Lucy here asked me to take care of her. Something I happen to be very good at. She has a heart of gold, <coughs> as do you, Doctor. If only my Lucy wasn't as absent-minded. It was only last weekend she spent a fortune on a bouquet for the dining area. Yes, let's not bring that up again, Arthur. Alpha and her men, what's taking so long? My mouth is dry. Ah, One not expected surprise. In her bedroom. Um, Mr. Morris, this is quite a surprise. I, I apologise for letting you Don't down. Don't apologise to the man. Quincy knows what it's like to lose around me when you agree, dear friend. Lucy, we're going to the tavern to celebrate the news of our engagement. Bye, Doctor. Come on, Arthur. 
The more the merrier, I say. Uh, I think I'd better be leaving. No, please do go with them, Jack. I mean, Dr. Seward. At least I know some of you responsible will be with them. Great, we'll see you downstairs. Jack. No matter. We are where we are. And if I cannot love you, then I will continue to cure. Because that is my life. Congratulations, by the way. <clears throat> We saw the amount you drank in Jonathan's engagement. I suggest the doctor protest too much. I concur. That may well be, sir, but I think we can all agree that life can take unexpected turns. Your engagement to Lucy happens to be one of those, Mr. Holmwood. Please, call me Arthur. Rather well, not. I must ask, though, Arthur. What's your secret? How did you make the beautiful Lucy does not succumb to your charm? I said the right things, offered a security, and well, what woman could resist the home of charm? <laughs> it, it clearly works. Women like to be submerged in attention and wealth. And I don't have to pose to play such games if it means I can tame such a shrew as Lucy. Don't! Don't call her that. I seem to have offended you, Doctor. I'm sure not sure no offence for Carl. No offence was intended for me, sir, but a lady like Lucy deserves respect. Women like Lucy deserve tolerance and freedom. Freedom to think she is the one in charge. Respect is awarded to those of sound mind and good will. Then respect must avoid you like the plague, Mr. Holmwood. You disrespect me, Doctor. Gentlemen, let this not succumb to fisticuffs. Let's make amends and enjoy our night. I think I better leave. I think you better leave too. Right. That's a gun. This is a 16th century pistol, built and sculpted in southern Nebraska. It's loaded with three bolts of gunpowder, and it's designed to kill any man from 30 feet away. So, from where I am, sir, I've got a pretty good aim at the both of y'all. Let's sit down and enjoy our night, right? Agreed. To tell us, Quincy, why is it that you carry a gun wherever you go? It's not the norm of this part of the world. The things I've seen in life, you've got to rely on two things. Instinct and the willingness to carry arms. It says in my <coughs> constitution, so I'm just honouring my patriotic duty in another part of the world. As the doctor said, there's many unexplained things in life. What manner of things have you seen, sir? Things beyond human imagination. You wouldn't understand. Sir, please, I am friends with Professor Van Helsing. A doctorate at the University of Berlin, and he too talks in riddles. So, try me. Tell a story about the Panthers. Oh yeah, that's a story. Many years ago, when I was working on my father's ranch, I saw a bad attack and drink blood from my horse. Those things were not normal, chaotic, savage. Fall things crumbled to the floor. The only thing I could do for them was to shoot them dead. At least I'm not prepared for everything. I swear I made some of this up sometime. Come on, guys. Kiss and make up. We're going to have a whiskey at the bar. No, thank no, you. I'm probably not. Come on. Ah. 
You will never love you, Doctor. Go to hell, Arthur. The dear doctor will never know true love. Never know, never know! <laughs> I don't understand. What do you mean? Something's coming, Dr. Seward. Something you and your friends will never stop. I, I don't, I don't know what you mean. I don't... So such charm, and yet he possesses a soul that's as black as paint. He shows no mercy, but a spared one, Jonathan Arker. Jonathan, Jonathan's been held captive. We must inform me. Wait. Wait. He sees fresh blood tonight. A young and vivacious beauty. He will come for her at nightfall. When she sleeps. She will become his. Are you talking about Mina? Is she in danger? We need to tell her now! Mina is a true spirit, yes. But the blood he sees tonight is the blood of Western Ra. <laughs> Lucy. Lucy's in danger. Gordon, I need to contact Professor Van Helsing. What we seem to be dealing with here is beyond any sort of rational science. His details are on my desk, but for now, keep them feel sedated. Yes, up there. Lucy. Lucy. Lucy, I said call you at once, Lucy! I heard such a commotion. What is going on? It's Lucy. She's acting inappropriately, refusing to answer me. She is sleepwalking, Arthur. You must show patience. You go for help and I'll try to calm her down. Oh, look, Lucy, come away from the window. Lucy, you're just sleepwalking. Please wake up. The waves, the waves are wild. The ship sails through the chaos and the cold. Lucy, you're scaring me. Fear not, for the ship will best the storm and reach its port. The ship that harbors the blood of the earth. 
He's coming for me. My master is coming for me. <laughs> I'm alone in the castle with these awful women. No, Mina is a woman, and there is not in common. They are devils of the pit. No, no. You will surrender to us. You will surrender to him. I will surrender myself to him and only him. Lucy, what's become of you? My master, rejoice, my master! Come to me, my love, come to me. There was a window near them, and they could not have passed without my noticing. I shall not remain alone with them. I may find a way from this dreadful place. Worship him, worship him! <laughs> I wait for you, my love, bring your as the fourth to man may sleep. Goodbye, all. Goodbye! don't need to apply, but if they did, I'd imagine that my PhD, my MD and my DLIT, which was a very boring Wednesday afternoon, my lord, and my doctorate from the University of Berlin would allow me to act in an investigative manner under invite of local authorities <coughs> such as you. As such, my authorization has been granted. <coughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> As you were, gentlemen. I am not a man of science, but paranormal logic. I'd say this whole situation is of a peculiar nature. Well, thank you for attending my call, Professor. But what do you mean the situation is peculiar? It's a, it's a boat crash, surely. See, 
the floor is hollow. But I am sure it is, but I don't quite understand. A storm could not cause such little damage. The sheer weight of these bodies alone should have crashed through the floor in seconds, causing them to drown. But yet, they all remain here. They're all dead. That's not the issue. The issue is that the bodies are still stiff. It's as if something's keeping their organs hard. You make this sound like the work of the, well, the otherworldly. Would you not agree? It's not a matter I wish to dispute, sir, but one I would rather keep a logical mind to. Hmm. That would certainly be a sensible thing to do. However, there are three reasons that say the contrary. Which are? Number one, paw prints. Size of a large dog, <clears throat> but there's no dog on board. Oh, that's fair enough. Most likely it drowned. Fair point. Okay. Mm -hmm. Number two, <coughs> come take a look at this body. Specifically, the neck. There's two bite marks, not a design of human teeth. Trust me, I've been bitten by humans. It's a great fight, but guns everywhere. Oh my goodness, this is, this is impossible. Take a good look, Doctor. That fight is aimed for the neck and nowhere else. <coughs> it's a very clever move, I'd say. A big carotid artery lies close to the surface of the neck, making it vulnerable. Normally, one quick bite, that victim's gone in seconds. Well, that doesn't seem to be much sign of a struggle. Like I said. Very clever move. The creature has done this crafty, seductive, manipulative. He's taken hold of the victims at their most vulnerable and then struck. Creature? Surely such things cannot exist. This is the work of fiction. To see what, whilst it's my intention to understand the thoughts of the rationale, it doesn't mean I have to indulge naivety. What are you saying? <laughs> I'm saying that the work that you see before you mm -hmm. is that of a vampire. Vampire? The vampire. The blood's been drained, but the bodies are still hard. <laughs> He's injected his own spirit into them, waiting. Waiting for what? For another attack. <laughs> he collects the blood and the bodies of the pure, and then he turns them into death. That's all along, since his coming. He's been trying his power, and slowly but surely, that child brain of his is working. Ha! In his life, in his living life, he'd go over to the Turkey frontier and then attack his enemies on their own ground. I mean, he was beaten back, sure. But did that stop him? No. He came back again and again and again, leaving horror and death in his wake, and he will strike again. <coughs> right now, I'm the only man that can help you end him. You are talking nonsense, sir. Are these tales of blood-collecting vampires or the writings of a... or oh, writings of a child? I'm sorry that I have wasted your day, your time, Professor. I did say there were three reasons. I've yet only divulged two of them. And what is that? <laughs> if this is the work of the chaos, hmm. the storm and man, why did you invite me? You need my help. Here I am. If this is the work of the creature, then I will stay and help. Where do we start? Lucy. My patient Redfield spoke about her in his rant, as though she was in grave danger. And we must find her and act fast. <laughs> Our master will see your lights, and it will be vanquished by the dark. We shall not be stopped. We shall not be moved. The dead will rise again. This is the work of witchcraft. Oh, I love it. <laughs> we will watch as you bleed your last. We will feast on your life force. You will become one of the dead. Thus we are ministers of God's own wish, that the world and the men for whom his son died shall not be given over to monsters whose very existence would defame him. Oh, thank God that word. They'd have been terrible last words. <laughs> <laughs> this really is the work of the ungodly. Redfield is right! Time is of the essence now, Dr. Seawood. The creature known as Dracula will strike again. Take me to Lucy. Wrong way, Professor! <laughs> <laughs>